Okay. Today we're going to cover uh, variable length subnet masking or VLSM. When we talked about classic subnetting, I told y'all what we accomplished there was setting up networks, either you know a prescribed number of networks or a prescribed number of hosts per network. So somebody would have said, look, I need 20 networks and we could do that. Or they would have said, I want whatever number of networks I get, but I want 4,000 networks per host. And we did that. It is way more common to, to have a situation where I don't have all of my networks need to be the same number of hosts. It's, it's way more common for me to get, I need one network with this many and a network with this many and a network with this many. So we're going to approach that today, and variable length subnet masking does that. Variable length subnet mask means that I will have subnet masks of different values, varying lengths. Okay. So the assumption I'm going to make is that if I gave you a list of numbers, you could put those in order from highest to lowest. Is it okay if I go out on that limb? Assume you can do that. So what we've been asked for, we've been asked for four networks, one with 8,000, one with 1,000, one with 400, and one network that has 100 hosts. The only perspective you have for calculating in VLSM is from the host perspective. So we don't have to worry so much about that, which direction am I going. I'm always going to start from the end and count back to the left. So always from right to left. Okay. All right. What you should do is approach this like four separate subnet questions. All right. Also, if you remember in classic subnetting, we weren't allowed to use the zero subnet, so we added two to compensate for the addresses we were going to throw away. Right. Okay. Remember that we're doing this only from the perspective of hosts. I'm still going to have two addresses I throw away, the network ID and the broadcast. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use big round numbers like this. When I've asked you for 8,000 hosts, 8,002 is not really that big a deal. All right? So you need to consider if somebody came to you and said, create me a network that has 31 hosts on it. Remember we talked about that it would be important to add two, because if I just did 31, my dividing line is here. But if I add the two, now I'm at 33, I need to be on this side of the line, right? Please keep that in mind, but I'm not, in these examples, I'm not going to keep doing that. Remember to add two, add two, add, so keep that in mind, okay? All right. So our first question becomes, I need, I want a, a network that has 8,000 posts. So we got to figure out how many bits it takes to do that. For the most part, your cookbook on this remains the same. All the steps that you did for uh, calculating the number of posts in a network, and it's do the same thing. So your cookbook remains, all right? But I got to figure out how many bits to write number 8,000, which means I need to extend this number line. So when we get to 56, sorry. Is the biggest number? Well, if I keep doubling, I get 128, 128 is 256, then 512, 1024, 2048, 4096, 8192. Okay. As soon as I write the number that's bigger than what I've been asked for, I can stop. Your dividing line is going to be here. So there was 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 bits. Okay? 
let's just sort of make a note of that, just so we kind of keep track of what we're doing. So it takes me 13 bits to write the number 8,000. So we start at the end down here and come this direction, 13. And here's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. There's my line, right? Y'all with me? I am allowed to use the zero network. So your very first network ID is going to be the address that you own. Okay? So we already know our first usable as well, correct? Because I just have to add one to this. is how do I know my broadcast? How have we been doing it? What's that little shortcut? If I know this one, I can subtract from one? Okay. So what we just did by moving our line, if I put a one right there, this actually gives me my next network ID. So what I have now between here and here takes care of that 8,000. Okay? So now I can 172.16.1.0. Now, sort of stop your brain right there. You solved that subnetting problem. You gave me a network with at least 8,000 hosts on it. It actually is going to have 8,190 usable hosts between here and here. Okay? Now I've been asked, now they come back and you're like, oh good, I'm done with that. Now they come back and go, no, 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 no. Now I need a thousand hosts. My next network needs to be a thousand. <clears throat> leave this, leave this bit turned on. But get rid of that line. Okay? Alright. Before I get too far ahead. What additional piece of information do I need? about that network. I know network addresses. I need to know my new subnet mask, right? Mm -hmm. All right, let me, let me put this back for a second. Getting ahead. I need to tell you what the new subnet mask is. It's 255.255 and then three more bits. Dot 224 is my new one, except what we normally do for VLSM is I want to be able to write that in shorthand. So there is this thing called classless inter-domain routing, CIDR or CIDR. I want you to write this in CIDR notation, which basically means I just need you to tell me how many ones there are in the subnet mask. There are eight there, eight there, plus three more. So 19, right? Come here, put a slash, 19. You just told me my new subnet mask. Okay. So really, if you followed the cookbook, I think what I told you was, Find the dividing line, now calculate your new subnet mask. So we could have done that earlier. Alright, now I tell you, give me a thousand. This is my starting address. 
This is my network ID from a network that's going to have a thousand hosts on it. So leave it up here. Leave this bit turned on. Let's get rid of this. Now the question becomes, where do I draw a line for a thousand? How do I write a thousand in binary? It's going to be between 512 and 1024, right? Okay. So it's going to be right there. So I'm now at 8, 9, 10. There. Put a 1 in there. And add these two together. 32 plus 4 more is my next network ID. And now, my new subnet mask, if I was at 19 bits here, 20, 21, 22, there are now 22 bits in my subnet mask, 8 here, 8 here, 6 there, so now this is a slash 22, my first usable. My broadcast, take one off of that. Miss Arnold? Yeah. Is it 38 or is it 36 on the 400? I'm sorry, it should be 36. <clears throat> 32 plus 4. Math is hard. Now you got to do it one more time because you've been asked for 100. So where's the dividing line for 100 hosts? 
24 to 128. Right. Here. So now we're we're now here. Right? Leave everything else turned on like it has been. Draw my line. Turn the bit on just to the left of it. So the next network ID would be what's my new subnet bounds? It's a slash what? Now it's 25. Now remember, pay attention to what your next thing is. One less than this. You're done. You gave me my networks that I asked for. And this, from here on to 16.255.255 is just sort of sitting there unused. That's your future growth. Okay? So I've still got some addresses left over. I started off with one address that would give me, it's a, a class B, so you know I've got what 65,000 hosts on this network. I don't need that many. I don't want that many on one network. I now turn that one address into four, and I've still got room to grow. The drawback here to this version of this is that if somebody comes back to you and says, okay, well, now I need a network that has 2,000 hosts. I've got to adjust. Okay. Typically, your networks are pretty stable and you'll know up front what your numbers are and you'll be okay. All I did was basically four separate times performed classic subnetting that you already know. Right? Whether you believe it or not, you already know it. Right? What else? More questions? Any questions? We'll do another one.